copyright disclaimer under the section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by a copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. You know, we have the book, yeah. and then we won't, we won't implement the judgment on it. Like, mm -hmm. like we were talking about earlier, why do you have to go? Why do you have to go listen to some right wing um, TV show? Why do you have to go listen yeah. to Fox News yeah. to get to get talking points when you got the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger? So like, you know what I mean? Why Why are you listening to? Why are you like? Why are you listening to Shepard Smith on uh, Fox News when you got the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Riddle me that, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. It's, it's like, crazy. And, and that, like, crazy. The, the moves we the moves the the moves we make don't make any sense sometimes. Yeah. The moves that we make in this community in our community and yep. don't make any sense at all sometimes. Many times. Yep. 100%. Many times. So now, now the mega church. The, the solution is simple the implementation. Yeah. yeah the yeah. mega churches, the whole thing, uh, the, the mega churches, the Trumpism, the Tea Party, uh, uh, the, the the black church is not affecting the white churches. They just um, the apologists apologists they want to attack Islam on behalf of other entities uh, and the money that's present in all these different things is the money. Yeah, it's all about getting the money, securing the bag. So everybody yeah. is securing the bag. Mm -hmm. And no, there's no sincerity in any of these different areas. I'm not seeing any sincerity at all. Mm -hmm. So I'm, and so this is 2018. Mm -hmm. It's the beginning of Ramadan, 2018. And I got a text message from a, a brother that I knew. Hadn't spoken to the brother in years. Mm -hmm. And again, the cutter, the cutter of Allah, the brother just text message. He messaged me and he said, "How you know what was going on?" He said, "Are you ready to come home?" You know, <laughs> and I was like, uh, "I was like, oh, ready? Are you ready to come to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and the Gospel?" You know, you know, something stupid. And um, <laughs> just try to be smart. Just try to my ego, and um, <laughs> and we and him started talking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> me and him started talking. You know, and. Uh, um, I don't know. It, it was just, like I said, the cut of Allah, it was the right moment, the right time, who had the right word, at the, who reached out to me at the right time in the right moment in my life, mm. where I was willing to consider, mm. where I was willing to rethink the moves that I made. Mm. And, uh, and me and his, me and his dialogue, turned into, I decided to visit uh, a masjid, mm. not too far from where I was working at the time. Mm. And it was, like I said, it was Ramadan, so the masjids were packed. So I was just sitting back watching people, make, and a Pakistani brother, but he was a good, he was a good brother. Still You're sitting brother back watching um, what now? And it, and me and him started having watching watching people make salah. Oh, just make watching people make salah. Mm. And um, um, we started talking, and I started, you know, like a lot of the object, you know, the the criticism of critic uh, the criticisms of Islam that float around. 
a lot of that stuff, a lot of that stuff can be answered. Really, so answers really. Um, yeah. It's the, the the Christian apologists. They take things out of context. Yeah, of course, so, that's so their they, job. They right? repeat <laughs> things without a context. So they'll yeah. repeat a, a a hadith with no con with no context. Yeah, you know they'll they'll give you a, the Quran verse, but if there's no background, there's no context, you don't know. You know, you yeah, just that, that's, know that's, that's their whole that's their whole you. job. Their whole job is to so, and I, and to take a ayat of Quran or a hadith and explain it in a way that no Muslim scholar in history has ever explained it, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? And bring yes, it to the Christians, exactly. right? That's their whole mo, right? Because I was mentioning and, in one and, of my videos. That's that the MO. We, Just like you said, that that's the most. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, exactly. They'll take the, uh, something from the Quran or a Hadith and explain it in a, a way that nobody has ever understood it before. And then what they'll do is when you tell them, well, no, no scholar has ever said that before, they will, they will use a conspiracy theory and say that's because they're hiding that. <laughs> they're hiding the real, they're, you know, yeah, they're they're hiding the real what that really the real means. Meaning, yeah, and so we're for, exposing for, the real. For fourteen hundred years, yeah. this me this meaning of this uh, verse of Quran or this hadith has been hidden until Sam Shamoon discovered the true meaning <laughs> <laughs> in twenty twenty one. And or they'll say, <laughs> or they, or they'll say, Daesh, Daesh, and ISIS. They're the ones who understand Islam correctly. Mm, yeah. They're the ones that understand Islam correctly. It's the guy, it's the local masjid. They don't, they're the ones who no, no, don't no. understand Islam and they're not practicing. Yeah. Because if exactly. they understood it and practice it, they would be like ISIS. Yeah. You know, just, just, like, use, just like these the type KKK of things. understand the Bible correctly, right? Because, you know, <laughs> yeah. the KKK has a true understanding of the Bible. You know, but they don't, they, again, their whole job is not to use logic, it's to use logical fallacies, because they're apologists, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's their, the nature of the job. When somebody's paying you to get material against um, any other group, it doesn't make a difference, we Muslims, whatever, but they're paying you to get material to refute these groups. Are you really concerned about the the what you call it the integrity of the information you're bringing no you just bring it you say anything as long as the, the money's flowing you'll say anything and that's what they do right because they're, they're only trying to prevent christians from becoming muslims because they don't convert muslims to christianity that that's just that's not a thing it's, it doesn't happen with the apology circles right so yeah you know? yes and it's it's yes it the whole entire thing. It's one of num, number one. It's really about politics and money. That's number mm -hmm. one. It's not about God mm -hmm. or you know uh, <laughs> heaven or salvation. It's about yeah. politics and money, and the purpose is to to demonize Islam. To it cannot have an effect on the society. Yes, it can never have an effect on the society. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Our, the way this, the way we have the society set up, the, you know, the structure, the systematic structure we have with this, the society, the, 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 the different hierarchies we have, uh, they're going to stay in place. That's the whole entire. If anybody wants to understand how the West works, is there there's a system in place, and the system must be defended at all costs. Mm. The system must stay in place, mm. and nothing can come and disrupt the system. Mm -hmm. And certainly not Islam. You know, we're not certainly going to let Islam come in here and yeah. disrupt the system or change or reform the system. It's going and to when, stay when exactly the way it's been. In the 90s, that's exactly what was happening. The system was getting disrupted. Yes. So something had to be done to disrupt to disrupt that. Yeah, but can yes. he just spoke? <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know. Yes. So, so yeah, like you, like you said, you... it's the key. You were you were talking to your friend. You're asking these questions, right? And um, what was going through your mind? You say you mentioned that these questions could be easily answered because really the apologist arguments are like nothing burgers. 
you know, then it's, it's just a whole bunch of stuff taken out of context, right? And, what's and also, you have to know that you have to you have to know the the you have to actually know the motivation and the agenda behind a narrative. Mm. Like if somebody can give you a narrative, you know, mm. I can give you like I can give you a narrative, then you can give a narrative, and the next person gives a narrative. We all got these all these competing narratives, mm. and it can be confusing. Which okay, which narrative is the correct? I don't know. I don't. Know, which you're all saying the different things. I don't know who's telling the truth or not. But if you know the motivation. Mm-hmm. You know and the you know, the the what the motivation is, mm-hmm. what the end game is, what is the end game of the of the narrative? Mm-hmm. Then you can oh okay yeah. oh that's what this is about exactly that's what this is about okay I, I see now I see now total okay. sense yes <laughs> he is motivated by yes. money that's why he can't change right yes. And no, and notice so, that these these apologist types like David Wood and Sam Shamoon, they have some like serious psychological quirks, like serious. It's not like a, oh, a yes. small small thing. No, no, very, no, very like these are type the types of people that if you understood the psychological quirks that they have, you would never put them at the forefront of the position that they are in right now because it's dangerous and it's irresponsible right but that that type of person that's why they're not that's why they don't that type of personality that's why they don't have any the type of personality that Mm -hmm. they have go ahead go ahead it's perfect to fulfill a nefarious agenda because they don't have the empathy or the the they can't relate they don't have that ability to relate to people's pain like that but they're they they're willing to put other people in pain and in, and lie and to just be dishonest because of their person their their psychological um, issues go ahead i was going to say that's why they don't have they're not pastors mm. they're not like pastors or deacons they don't have any type of you know they don't put these they don't put them in front of a church you know no, nobody's going to put them in front of a church on a sunday morning and let mm. them talk yeah they they're allowed to that area that mm. that's your lane yeah you're good at that lane mm. we're toler we're they're, we're they're willing to tolerate their 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 croakiness and their mental illness mm. and all their hollering and cussing and Mm. calling their wives whores and all this other stuff, all this stuff they do, they're willing mm. to tolerate it as long as you keep it, keep it in that lane mm. where you attack Islam. Mm. Don't do nothing else. Mm. You stay in that lane and we'll tolerate you and mm. we'll fund you. Yeah. And we'll make sure you have a, you know, you'll be able to eat, live and eat and, you know, do what you got to do. Mm. I mean, David Wood, somebody pointed this out to me. David Wood put a GoFundMe up because he has, um, you know, he has children who have uh, serious handicap illnesses. Mm. And um, he put up a GoFundMe to get some equipment for them. I think it was a ramp or something like that. Okay, that's a legitimate thing. Okay. And he was asking for like twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000, but he ended up getting $200,000. Oh, wow. $200,000 off a of GoFundMe. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. You no. Know, and I know that's not the only it's not the only money he's received, but that's just one example. Mm-hmm. That's just one example mm-hmm. of how these people get supported, like you know. So like I said, as time has gone on, you've seen that these people they're getting wackier and wackier. Mm-hmm. The whole entire the, the, just Sam Shimon, Sam Wood, they're they're getting wacky. The whole event, the whole white evangelical world. Yeah, that, that's like is, <laughs> it's on some next level stuff now since Donald Trump. <laughs> getting wacky. Yeah. Looking up in the Capitol building. You got yeah. people saying that the, the election was it was rigged and it's yeah. fake. <laughs> you got people talking about they're ready for a civil war. Mm-hmm. It's you know. That shows you the how far that stuff can get. 
to admit, it has to publicly admit that Christian nationalism is the biggest eternal terrorist threat. Yeah. You know, it gets that bad that you have to admit it, you know, like, uh, you know, and they're guys a little out of hand. They have no know? choice. They you got know. no choices. The cameras are on, and <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> You know, they have to be snitching on their own now. Like, you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah, I mean, here, here in Michigan, I, I know you saw that these guys had a plot to kidnap the the governor of Michigan. Yeah, they were going to kidnap the governor of Michigan. Yep. They were going to blow up. A, they were going to blow up a bridge. Mm -hmm. They were going to, you know, surround. They were going to set up booby traps for for the police and for the FBI. Mm -hmm. You and know, they weren't joking. They're dead serious. So, picture of picture. If some Muslims, they were their citizens. Mm -hmm. Picture of some, a group of Muslims. A group, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. You know, but those individuals exist. You know, they've got they've got camps out in the woods where they got MSIS teams and AR 15s and guns. They're they're doing drills. Yeah, they're how To um, uh, run up in the White House, how, how to how to take over. The the government, they've got plans set in place and that they, they, they have in place to take over city governments, mm -hmm. state governments, and the federal. And I'm, I'm, I'm so, I wouldn't be surprised if they got plans to run up in some, in some of these massages also. Yeah, of course. It wouldn't surprise me. It, it, it wouldn't surprise that. me at all. How many, how many massages have been shot up already? You know what I mean? So it ain't no thing. Yeah. <laughs> not, so not no thing for, for them. You know what I'm saying? So yeah yeah so now now um you're asking these questions and what's going through your mind as he's answering as you see that what like these nothing burgers in, in these questions you know the whole atmosphere of the uh the masjid of ramadan of, mm. you know brothers reaching out to me having these conversations where my mind is at at this point uh, my experiences have led, have led up to this point it's almost like I said, like my my heart had melted. Mm. You know, um, whatever whatever I had, whatever antagonistic feelings I had, or you know that I had towards the the Muslim community or Islam, it was melting away, and I really, I really began I, I began reflecting and looking back at when I had left Islam, and I I looked at what were the motivations for why did I do this mm. what were the motivations for, for doing this again mm. or no what was this so what was this supposed to be about again mm. um you know and it came to the conclusion I didn't have to I really didn't have to leave this long mm. and once I if I, once I was able to entertain the idea I didn't have to leave this long mm. then the next thought was Maybe I shouldn't have left Islam. <laughs> so, and then once, <laughs> once I was able to entertain the thought I shouldn't have left Islam, then I should return back to Islam. Mm -hmm. And I mean that's and it that's it happened during the, the month of Ramadan, two thousand and eighteen. That's and at the end of the at, by the end of the month, I had taken my shahada and entered back into Islam. Now at this this time, right? Because you had already left. Christianity, you become Muslim, then you left Islam to become Christian. Now, we, before, when you were, the first time you became a Muslim, uh, you were just a cultural Christian, right? Correct? Cultural you, Christian. I was looking for, I was looking for the truth in Christianity. Mm -hmm. um, well, I wasn't finding a, a whole lot. I, I went to different churches and different things. And I, you know, um, I actually, I, um, one of the first introductions to Islam that I received was I was dating a girl. You know, I liked the girl, you know, you know, and I wanted to be with her. So I would show up to church, but I, you know, I was, can you, can you repeat I was showing up to church high. <laughs> Can you repeat it again? You yeah, I was I was dating a girl who, who I was dating a girl whose father was trying to start a church, ah, starting yeah. the church, mm -hmm. and uh, so she wanted me she wanted me to come to church with her, 
So I wanted to keep dating her and being, you know, you know, keep on uh, dating her and having contact with her. So I would show up to church, but I would, I'd be high, you know, I was, I would smoke a blunt before I went to church and, you know, yeah. sit with her. And so it really wasn't that serious. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and it was a, it was a guy in the church. It was a lady. She was like a, you know, church lady and she had a son and he had stopped coming to church. And the reason he had stopped coming to church is because he became Muslim. Mm. So that was like one of my fir the, the first, you know, awakenings to Islam. But like I said, I didn't know what Islam was. So all I could do was go to the nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I didn't, I had no, I didn't, I had no idea what Islam was or what, what a masjid was or where a masjid was even at, mm -hmm. you know. So that, yeah, so it, my, my, my uh, experience with Christianity before all that was, it wasn't, I was going to church, but it really wasn't nothing ser anything serious or life changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, <coughs> now you're a cultural Christian. You're going to church for a girl, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. You leave yeah. Christianity mm -hmm. for Islam, right? And mm -hmm. yeah, you were happy with Islam. You loved it until the fitna came. And the fitna got so big that it caused a crisis of faith in you, right? And I want people to understand that you didn't leave Islam because you thought Islam was false. You left Islam because of fitna, correct? Yeah. So I right. thought, the, see, my, 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 yeah, my mindset at that time was the fitna Mm. had to do with Islam. Islam, exactly. You know, That's the what fitna I'm was because it, right? Yes. You, you, yeah, the fitna had to, the the fitna must have it must be because of Islam. Exactly. That's you know, the fitna must be because of something's wrong with Islam. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise why not would not that there's you know like we talked about for it. Yeah. It's not that somebody's infiltrating the community. It's not that nefarious mm -hmm. things are being done to cause division. It's mm -hmm. not that um you know, these, you know, this tribalism, uh, the sectarianism uh, was creeping in and, and people were going, even though people were warning against, against sectarianism and innovation, they, they were, were engaging in sectarianism exactly. and innovation at the same time, you know, exactly. while they're warning against it, you know, while they're saying other, they're, while they're pointing the fingers at other people saying they're engaging in innovation and, and sectarianism, they're engaging in yeah. you know, innovation in the sectarianism. Mm -hmm. but, so yeah so so basically so in your in your it heart became hearts, it became so toxic in in your heart of hearts what's happening now is you are aligning the fitna with islam itself and it becomes a, a like a, a parallel thing with you right so you're saying how can this religion be true if the people are acting like this am i right so far Exactly, 100%. Yes, because if the religion was true, if Islam was true, then everybody would be in harmony and, and brotherhood. And But only a devil would act like this. So therefore, Islam can't be true. Yes. Okay, you yes. see? So now you leave Islam not because Islam is false, but because of the people. And I want you to under, I want people to understand that. The way that you act and the way you... you you uh, form your communities and you first, you have to form the community in your heart first. You understand? And all these fail safes are already in Islam to begin with, you know, how to treat another Muslim. Do not boycott your Muslim brother for more than three days. Uh, the, the, the blood, the honor, the, the wealth of, of a Muslim is haram to another Muslim. You know, all these ahadith, how to act with an, another Muslim, the, the smallest, uh, the the uh, even a smile can be sadaqa, you know. Giving a smile can be sadaqa. You share share the salams because sharing the salams will for will gospel cause the sins to fall off of you. The all these type of things, all of these are fail safes to prevent exactly what was happening to you. So the so uh, the prophet says, telling he's telling you to give the salams. Yes. These people are telling you not to give the salams because that person's ahlul bid'ah. The prophet sallam, is telling you. Uh, uh, not to make make riba and not to backbite, you know, they're telling you to backbite because they're Ahmad Bidah. <laughs>
سائل يقول يوجد جماعة تسمي نفسها جماعة الجرح والتعديل أو السلميين وشغله الشاب للبحث عن أغلاط المشايخ والدعاء ثم يقومون بعد ذلك بتبديعهم والتخذير منهم والتخذير منهم الجرح والتعديل عند المحدثين وهو من علم الإسناد من علم الأسانيد أما الكلام في الناس هذا ليس جرحا وتعديلا هذا غيبة ونميمة فعليه من يتوب إلى الله عز وجل ويترك هذا العمل يزكوا أنفسهم أولا قبل أن يبحثوا عن عيوب الناس نعم Everything the Sunnah is telling you they're telling you to do the opposite because they're telling you this is Islam so the Prophet is telling you one thing and they're telling you to do another thing right and you are Mm -hmm. uh, basically conceptualizing this in your head that this cannot be true. Therefore, I have to leave it. And what did you do? You became a Christian. And now you become a Christian, not just any type of Christian. You did what? You studied the Bible. You went to Bible school, correct? Mm -hmm. Right? Did you finish Bible school? Yes, yes. Yes, I did. So you are a legit, like, you could say you're a scholar in the Bible, pretty much. Right. I wouldn't call myself a scholar, but I I completed my studies in uh in biblical studies and earned my degree. There um, you go. I, right. They, they allow. So in any any community, you are a high level academic in the Bible, right? No matter what, because you have that degree. You studied. You finished. You understand? And now you reach a point in your life where Allah called you back to the masjid, and you went sincerely for you know just for the sake of allah you went right let's say for the sake of god you know for all intents and purposes right you go there with with no ill will and no ill feeling in, in your heart and you're asking questions sincerely to see the sincere answers from what you learned in the apolog apologetics committee uh, uh community rather and there has to be a point where now you are reaching a point where, you know, there's a crossroads here, right? You understand now Islam is the truth, but you also understand the implications behind leaving Christianity to become a Muslim. You understand that maybe there's going to be some embarrassment, some, some from, you know, because you already did this already, right? You, you, you understand that maybe there's going to be some distrust from the Muslims because you were Muslim and you became Christian, now you want to come back, right? So I want to know, I want you just to, to, to walk us through what's going through your mind at the time when you are now getting ready to leave Christianity again to become Muslim again. Like what in your, what are you feeling? Like what's, what, what are you feeling anxiety or are you just feeling like, okay, I'm doing the right thing. Like what's, what's, in your, what's going through your, your mind and your heart at this time? So leading up to that point, um, I am feeling in anxiety. Um, I, I am feeling pressure internally because I'm not talking about this with everybody else. I'm not talking about this with other. I got to, but for me, the thing was, and I've said this in, on other platforms is I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. You know, it's like. So you're, you feeling, know, you're feeling shame we, as well. I'm feeling shame and guilt. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling shame and guilt. Mm -hmm. So the shame and the guilt that I felt internally, I said the, the shame and the, the guilt that I felt internally was so great that it didn't matter what anybody else thought or said. Mm -hmm. Like nobody else could have said or did anything to me that would have came close to the amount of guilt that I felt inside. And, and like I said, I will wake up. I said you wake, you said you would wake up in the morning and it would be Have you ever had a dream where you thought the dream was real? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would be difficult to look at myself in the mirror. Mm. Yeah. So if you if you ever speak up and then you realize, no, that was a mm. dream. That wasn't real. Mm. But when you were having the dream seemed real, it seemed like it was really happening. Yes. And then to that's how it was. It's like I've been bamboozled, you know, I've been boozled, I've been bamboozled, led astray, mm -hmm. run amok, you know, 
like Malcolm X said, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't, I, I, you know, I made a wrong, <laughs> you know, you're on the freeway thinking you're driving, you're thinking you're driving to, uh, you know, south, and you figure out I'm driving north, <laughs> you know, I'm going in a completely di different direction, and I'm miles, I'm, I'm miles away from the, the destination I, I intended to go to. I got to turn Cross around and drive again. back <laughs> the opposite direction. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, this is where I'm at. So the, the guilt inside, the, the pressure inside my own self of, of knowing everything that we've been talking about so far, understanding that whatever beef I had with Islam and the Muslims, that was because of the fitna mm -hmm. and because of some of the racist attitudes among some of the immigrant Muslims. Mm -hmm. But that's not, that's not, is, that's not Islam's, yeah. that's not the Quran and the Sunnah. Mm -hmm. That's not the problem of the Quran and the Sunnah. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's, that's you know, the people that's the, that's the issues around it. Mm -hmm. The core is actually sound. Mm -hmm. uh, understanding that this Christian apologist stuff, this, this is about politics and money. Mm -hmm. Understanding that church is about politics and money. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, there's not, there's, it's, there's nothing real. If you are, you know, believing Christian, there's no room for you in Christianity at this point. In 2021, mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no room for you in Christianity. If you really believe in God and you really want to be spiritual, you want you want to be oh, you know, you want to be like your your great grandmother was. You know, there's no there's no place for you in the society now. Mm -hmm. You know, people look at you like something's wrong with you, like you're crazy. Yeah. You want to be modest. Mm -hmm. You want to be religious. You want to be, you know, you want to you want to sit around and pray all day. Like, what's mm -hmm. is something wrong with you? The Christians don't even want to practice. The Christians don't even want to practice Christianity anymore. They've given up on Christianity. They want to do politics. Mm -hmm. They want to do politics. Yeah, but, and that's on the left and the right. Yep, just ask, they want to be. Ask they either Donald want Trump. to. All the all these evangelical. Yes, they either want evangelical churches yeah. praying up for Donald Trump. <laughs> you know, did you did you see that that? But even the non even I can't, even... can't remember her name. She was like. We're, we're, we're asking the angels in Africa and she started speaking in tongues and craziness. But angels are being released right now. Angels are being dispatched right now. Hamanda ata ata rata te de baka sanda ata ambo osa kata rite eke banda ata rike didi asha da. For angels have even been dispatched from Africa right now. Africa right now. Africa right now. From Africa right now. They're coming here. They're coming here. In the name of Jesus from South America. They're coming here. They're coming here. They're coming here. They're coming here from Africa, from South America. Angelic forces, angelic reinforcement, angelic reinforcement, angelic reinforcement. Vika hata anda ata ora bata rata anda ek ek manda rasata. For I hear the sound of victory. I hear the sound of victory. You see that one? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I saw that one. Right, the well. angels being dispatched from Africa. There's angels. Yeah, being... yeah it's, it's it's become a joke. Yeah. Even in even on the uh, even outside of the white church, even in the black churches and the Latino churches, they're political. Mm -hmm. They don't. They don't. They're not even talking about a gospel. The gospel is, uh, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter. The black, you know, it's all political. Yeah, it's all of it is political. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, now that I'm realizing all this. Now it's like, like you said, a crossroads type moment. Like, mm -hmm. what are you gonna do now? Because mm -hmm. and, and internally, I couldn't, I can't go alone to get along any longer. Yeah. I can't just go along and get along. Mm -hmm. I can't. I just, I just can't do it. It's just not the kind of person I am. Mm -hmm. And so, then once I got to that moment, and I knew what I had to do, and I knew what had to be done. I just made up in my mind, this is what I'm going to do. I know it's going to be a bunch of backlash. Right. I know I'm going to get attacked. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to, people are going to say stuff. People are going to gossip about me. People mm -hmm. are going to, I know, I know everything that's going to happen. And I said, okay, just whatever. Mm -hmm. Just let it happen. I have to correct this mistake. Mm -hmm. That's it. I just have to correct this mistake. You know, but I can't you know, face, I can't the face the day of judgment. Received, right? 
it's also from the the signs of the class as well because we know um, from the prophecy seven he said that um, basically whoever backbites another person they're essentially giving you their good deeds and they're taking your bad deeds and because you were in this circle this this high level apologetic circle sitting beside David Wood and going on these shows right funded by Zionists right as a co-head host you had a slew of people just even uh you know just you were the you were the talk of the town right when you when you became Muslim again right so yeah. were you receiving backlash from Muslims as well who didn't uh yes might have looked at you as suspicious yes. yes so you got it from both sides it wasn't just the Christians it was the Muslims as well yeah I was in the like at this time when I told you I was in the masjid I was mm -hmm. sitting in the masjid with the imam and a brother that I knew from back in the days was mm -hmm. in the masjid and he he literally like fast walked up to us got in my face and told me to get out the masjid now mm. you know subhanallah mm -hmm. you know now me and the brother we and the brother are cool now we're cool now yeah. but you know but his reaction to seeing me that 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 was his first reaction to seeing me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know like you get out of what are you doing here get out mm -hmm. you know and there were brother there were people who I tried to contact they wouldn't at first at first they wouldn't they would not um take my phone calls, calls. <laughs> they were, you know they wouldn't take my phone calls yep they were there were people there were people who were saying I don't believe it <laughs> there were a lot of people who said that I yeah. don't it, it, unless I hear it come out of his mouth mm -hmm. I won't believe it yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. So continue, yeah. continue. So that's why it took, you know, mm -hmm. I, I came back to Islam in 2018. That's why it took, it took three years. It took three years to get to this point. Mm -hmm. I had a people who did, did people who didn't on both sides, Christians and Muslims, believe it, who said they, they weren't going to believe it until they actually, they could see me, the words come out of my mouth saying that I was Muslim. Mm -hmm. you know, um, attacking me, uh, you know, the people at my church attacking me, the pastors, Sam mm -hmm. Shimon. Yeah, Sam Shimon. I can give him credit. I can imagine that, that yeah. one, bro. <laughs> Sam Shimon. Oh my gosh. That guy is Sam Shimon. <laughs> he's just a he's a piece of work, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, I watched a video of yours. Well, you're bringing some of the things that San Shimon yeah. said, right? I knew he was a character even before that video, but I didn't know like the extent. Like, the man legit called his wife a whore, and, like his ex-wife, and all kinds of. But you know what I'm saying? He's like disparaging his, his kids and all, like all kinds of craziness. You know, like he's he's there's something wrong with him. You know what I mean? Psychologically, he's off. You yeah. see what I'm saying? But he he's like the, at all, the forefront, and, making all this money for apologetics, like. How? How is this your representative for Jesus? He called, he called himself all a these guys. No all stuff. these guys that got, but mm -hmm. all these guys have controversy. So either directly on them or surrounding them. Even mm -hmm. uh, do you know the individual he died from cancer? Nabil Qureshi. Oh yeah. I don't know if you heard of him. Yeah. Yeah, Nabil Qureshi. He died. Um, the organization that he was a part of it was called Rism Ministries. Mm -hmm. The guy, the head guy of. Uh, Riz, uh, Rizm Ministries, he died also. He recently died. But it mm. came out that he was a, a, set, uh, a sexual um, abuser and pervert. Oh, wow. You know, he was a, assaulting women and he was a sexually assaulting women. Um, he was going to massage parlors, <laughs> uh, using people's <laughs> church donations. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you know, so that... That whole entire organ, that whole entire organization has collapsed now. It's mm. following the, the whole entire. So Nabil Qureshi, nobody said that he was involved in it, and nobody said that he he knew about it. But I think it should. The question should be asked: How much information did he know? But you, I don't think you could ever answer that question because he's not here now. But that organization that was backing him and putting money in his pocket to be able to write those books and to travel all around the world to give speeches, that organization was 
caught up in a complete sexual um, controversy and, and is falling yeah. apart. So each one of these dudes, all these dudes, there's something crazy going on with around them or with them. Mm -hmm. Each one. Are you st are you still in contact with David Wood? Or like you guys still talk? Or that's done? No, I've not. Had, I've not. I have not spoken to David Wood since probably 2017, 2018. Mm. And what about uh, Sammy Boy? <laughs> you talked to oh, him? Oh, Sam. Oh, I just spoke to Sam last week. <laughs> I told, <laughs> I, I, yeah, he called me up and cursed me out. On oh, the telephone. <laughs> he called me up and cursed me out on the telephone. Mm. And he was sitting, yeah, he was sending me crazy messages, calling me a stone liquor and all this other stuff. And you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's the same yeah. shit we all know and love, man. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, so yeah, he's he, he's vocal. He's been vocal about he's been vocal for the last three years. And like I didn't say anything about him. Three years. Mm. Three years he was constantly making little comments and digs and here and doing, there. you know saying stuff and making personal comments also mm -hmm. i didn't say anything about him mm -hmm. and till this year when i did the video that you're talking about who is the real sam i haven't talked to him video but somebody i know who's in contact with him has mm -hmm. been telling me he's been going crazy He's been going mm. crazy since I made that video, and oh uh, really? Whatever you know. No, it was it he was still like, hasn't denied any. Yeah, it's, I, it was like kind of damaging because it wasn't even like you. It was like all you're doing is you're taking, you're doing your commentary, of course, but you're taking his legit, what he's saying, like with out of his own mouth and putting it out there, and then you're showing what um, James White is saying about him, and everybody's basically saying the same thing about. Sam Shimon, like he's he's just a like a, a lunatic. Yeah, and he's he's more than a lunatic. He's fraudulent. Yeah, he's fraudulent. Like I, 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 I made a comment, and there was a video of James White speaking about this. I wish I could have got it in that. I, I wish I could have got it that clip into the uh, the one that I did about. Mm -hmm. And this guy doesn't even the guy doesn't even attend church. Mm -hmm. he's, the, he's supposed to be the top of Christian <laughs> apologist. He doesn't attend. He doesn't go to church. Yeah. He doesn't practice Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't practice Christianity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so crazy, bro. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. So now that you've been Muslim now for um, since 2018, right? Yes. Right. So how how was your yes. your your second time around? How was your second go around this time? Uh, my second uh, time around, um, like I said, it's been a I made the decision, and it's been a transli transition that's gone on for the last three years. That that pretty much the first year, I was pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. I was really quiet about it. I just you know. In the community I live in, go to the masjid, Mesalah, that's it. Nobody knows who I am. Yeah. Um, you know, I, had, I hadn't been online saying a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, brothers were urging me to, you know, you need to go public. You need to say something. You need to mm -hmm. put it out there. There were still brothers who was, said they didn't believe it. Like, yeah. until, we hear, until we hear him say <laughs> he's Muslim, we're not going to believe it. Yeah. Until we hear him say it. So that's why, and then I did the interview I did with uh, Faris Respond. Well, actually, I did an interview before that. Mm. I did an interview with a, a, a black Muslim brother down in Atlanta, mm -hmm. um, uh, Shadid Lewis. Mm. We did an interview, and that kind of got circulated around, and that picked up a lot of views. Mm. But then I did the interview with Faris Response, and that was kind of viral. Mm. And then that just led up. Communated uh, that just led to this where I'm at at this point, where I am speaking in public now mm -hmm. about the about you know the whole thing mm -hmm. and putting the information out there and um, so it was, it's been, yeah I, I think I, and, and also also I've been for the last three years I've I've been going through a thing inside my own self mm -hmm. um, because. You know, when I when I came back, I, I wanted, I didn't really know, did I want to have any, what were my feelings towards the dawah? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That's what we have been talking about. Yeah. My feelings to the Salafi Dawah. Mm-hmm. You know, and I didn't want to have anything to do with it. Mm-hmm. Even though I came back and, you know, I, I was like, <sighs> you know, I kind of I start, I start reading the some some of the books of the uh, the Asheris and the you know the Muslims yeah. and, and, and uh, I started watching some uh, Sufi uh, you know uh, YouTube clips and you know I don't want to have anything to do with that stuff. <laughs> what, what are they What are they talking about? What are yeah. these guys talking about? Yeah. But you know I keep the Dawah is inside of me. I keep mm-hmm. I can't mm-hmm. you know the Uthari Creed is inside of me. Nothing to me for me. And I'm disparaging anybody. I'm saying for me, mm-hmm. the Uthari Akita only makes sense and lines up. Yeah. It's the only thing that lines up and makes sense mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I can't get what I can't get with what y'all doing. <laughs> <You Yeah. know? laughs> I can't get with the stuff y'all doing. Yeah. I just can't do it. Yeah. I tried. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I, I came in with open a, a, a clean blank slate. And yeah. I and I came in, you know, really trying to be open minded to listen to hear what, what you know these other groups are talking about. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, well, no, that, that's where no, your advantage no, no. is, bro, because you became Salafi um, before the fitna, before all that stuff. So yeah. you saw how it was before. A lot of the brothers nowadays they don't have that advantage. You see what I'm saying? So they never seen anything mm-hmm. else. So you're coming from a, a privileged, advantaged position because you actually seen what true Salafia looks like. And you were yes. there when the fitna came and you you witnessed the fitna, you fell into the fitna, you were affected by the fitna, and you still came back after all that fitna. So you were in a, a yeah. very like you're in you're in a position that a lot of people cannot appreciate and your knowledge. And your experience is so important for the ummah, especially today. And on top of that, you're a Bible expert. And on top of that, you were in the apologist circles. Your story will help a lot of people. Do you realize how many people fell off because of that fitna? Do you realize how many Muslims are losing their religion today because of that same fitna? And they're, they're saying exactly what you're saying right now. Look, man, I know the Salafia thing is the truth, but the people are crazy, <laughs> right? So now you have, to, <laughs> you, you have to, it's like you have to make a decision. Is Salafia the truth? And the people are upon Salafia and they're upon the truth? Or are the people crazy and they're practicing something else? And really, that this right here is like um, it's like a real test for you because now your religion becomes sincerely for Allah, not people. You feel me? Yes. You 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 are now separating. Yeah. I mean, people at this point, from uh, from Islam itself, and you're starting to see. Okay, Allah wants me to do this. I'm going to do this, despite what the people see. You know, black people right now are going through a process of. Like we are being put, we're like iron in the um, in the the blacksmith's uh, fire, you know, hammered and hammered and hammered and over and over and over and over again. But at the end of that hammering is gonna, we're gonna be a sharpened weapon, right? But it's us yes. who have to recognize what's really going on, and we are the ones who have to fix everything. You know, we can't depend on other people. We can't depend. You know, on... go ahead, go ahead. The, the reality, Aki, that. The black black Muslim, we are the we are the origination of Islam in America. Mm-hmm. You know, we came we came here with Islam. We were forced to came here. We came with the Islam, and yep. then it was ta- it was snatched away from us. Away from us, yep. And then we re- we started a process of waking up and rediscovering Islam. And mm-hmm. we are the we are the the seed of, of Islam in the Western world. Mm-hmm. And and what everybody has to realize, whether you're an immigrant, whether from this tribe or that tribe, Islam is not going to be established and flourish without the establishment and the flourishing of the Black Muslim community. That's right. 
That's right. You, you don't, we don't even know this, how many my, of our ancestors my conviction. making dua my conviction. for us to get to this point. You know what I mean? So anyways, go ahead. Continue, bro. Yes. 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 You can't, you're not going to come and build a masjid and set up your community and think you're going to be successful. And the indigenous people here who can't, who are the ancestors of the original Muslims here and who 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 we discovered Islam, North American or South American Caribbean Islam? We said you can't monkey branch over us, mm. and then start to think you're going to start something. It has to be built on justice, or is none of it's going to work for anybody? Exactly. Exactly. Nobody's going to have a. Nobody's going to be successful. Exactly. If we can't be exactly the white supremacy right now is under divine judgment from Allah. And we are seeing the lines getting less and less blurred between uh, white supremacy and everybody else. The lines are becoming very clear now, right? So the Muslims have to decide which, which side they're gonna be on because you can't be a Muslim talking about, you know, Quran and Sunnah and still be on the side of white supremacy, and like how? How does that work? How does that work? You have to take you have to take the side of justice, you know. Islam, when it came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those Arabs, they were poor, they were destitute, they were illiterate, you know, they were raggedy and dirty and dusty, and it was Islam that ele elevated from from that from that lowly status to those same Arabs taking over the entire world. Right? Who is the poor? Who is the destitute? Who is the dusty and raggedy in the West? Who is it? If it's not black people, then who is it? Who is the misguided? Who are the uncouth? Who are the uncivilized in the West? The illiterate? The uneducated? There has to be black people. And Islam is coming to elevate us. Right? So we as the black Muslim community, we cannot wait for other communities to come and save us. We have the Quran, we have the Sunnah, the same Quran and Sunnah that other groups are reading, we're reading the same thing. If you're gonna we be waiting for somebody else to come save you, you've been waiting for a long time. But if you depend on Allah and take this Islam thing seriously, then we can there's nothing that we can't do. Because we're gonna be doing it and we're gonna give glory all to Allah because we know we didn't do it for ourselves. That's one hundred percent true. And you know, like uh, on the lines of what we were speaking about earlier, you know, there are think tanks and there are organizations who not only mo monitor Muslims, they watch everything Muslims do, they are watching everything but everything that we're posting online, they're watching it, they're watching all the websites. They're watching all the lectures that we we uh, we post online. Um, they are astute in Islamic history. Mm -hmm. They understand Islamic history perfectly. Mm -hmm. They study the Quran. They study the Hadith. Mm -hmm. That's all they do. The whole entire organizations that do this. They're non-Muslim. And they're not Muslims. They're not so Muslims. So when they saw, they're not Muslim. So mm -hmm. when they saw what was happening in the 90s and the early 2000s, with real Islam taking uh, root. Mm. And, and starting to flourish, they knew. Hold on, y'all not about to set up a you know our our Andalus in North America. Y'all not about. <laughs> that, that, about we happening. know what y'all did before. That's you know what, what happened that before. was happening. That was legit like, <laughs> happening in the yes. nineties. Everybody was talking about talibul ilm and seeking knowledge, and yes. you know what I mean, and and making dow, and everybody was doing it. They were on it. You know what I mean? And brotherhood, and inviting each other for dinner, and like this, and checking like. Everybody was practicing that. You know what I mean? It was yes. outsiders that came. I remember, I said, they, they know, the, again, now if they know the Sirah of the Prophet, so Allah, so. they know it. They understood the generation. One generation took them from that to going head up with Rome and Persia being able to come out of not just spread uh, uh, through 
Arabia, ever allow that to ever happen again. We, there, it's a whole entire complex set up that that should never happen again. We're going to make, we're going to do whatever we got to do that that never happens again. Uh, Islam doesn't spread from Arabia to the entire planet. Yes. Exactly. Well, then it doesn't even take root and establish in one place. Mm -hmm. We're not going to let it uh, take root and establish in one place. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is the enemy that we're dealing with. And, and no again, what, we, we as black people, we got to realize that no matter what the enemy plots and plans, and they do plot, their, their plots and plans are not like ours, okay? They plan things for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years and ahead. When Allah is speaking about they plot and plan, he's talking about these people. He's talking about who thinks to plot for 50 years in advance. These devils do. And they have plans for you for the next 50 years. But what, when we realize as black people that no matter what they plot and no matter what they plan, Allah also plots and plans. And Allah is the best of planners. It is us now who have to take up the reins. Because we, as we are beginning to see clearly what the enemy is and how they operate, we realize more how much we actually need Allah. So us, it's us. The onus is on us. It is us who have to, you know, not just read the Quran and memorize it, but implement it, understand it, you know, in a real way, you know, and follow the advice of the prophet, not to get involved in, in, in backbiting and all these destructive behaviors that destroy the community. We have social ills in the black community that need to be solved before we start figuring out which Saudi scholar is on and off it. That ain't got nothing to do with us. Communities don't need to be divided over some Saudi Arabian scholars argument with another Saudi Arabian scholar. That ain't got nothing to do with us. We are the ones who have to want Islam more than anybody else wants it for us. That's true. That's true. That is definitely true. So, you know, um, it's all about who's going to who's going to grab the reins and really um, learn and establish the Quran and the Sunnah. Yeah. Who's going to who's who's going to step up to do that? And right at the moment, I, honestly, I don't see I don't see anybody as a group doing that at the moment. Now, you know, I lost. Well, if you always, do it as an individual. Yeah, the group, the group will come. Yes, the Prophet Sallallahu the Prophet Sallam was one person. He was by himself. He didn't start off with a group. He started off as one man. You understand? And then the group came afterwards. Yes, it's it's upon it's the onus upon every individual Muslim, right? And brotherhood is more important than uh, disunity. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's better not to say anything to keep the brotherhood. Have to say something and cause this unity. You know what I mean? And we have to understand it as black people because we get played a lot. We do. We get we have all kinds of infiltrators in our community. Our history is this unity because of the of the enemy. That's our history. From way back in slavery times when they used to teach the uh black people the Bible in order to teach uh the the slaves how to be slaves. From the, when they used to give black men and black men the whip to whip other slaves. You understand? They infiltrated every aspect of our, of our lives from the church to our schools to our, even our, our very homes. So we are the ones who have to be responsible for ourselves, right? We can't expect anybody else to be responsible for, for us because the enemy will always try to destroy us and they will never stop trying to destroy us. So if you if you wanted to beat defeat this enemy, you think you're going to defeat it by yourself, or will Allah assist you in defeating the enemy? And I have no doubt, I have absolutely no doubt that Allah will assist us in defeating this enemy, and they will lose everything uh, right before our eyes, just like uh, Fir'aun lost everything right before the eyes of uh, Beni Israel um, in, in the in the Red Sea. You know, I have no doubt that will happen for us. But we are the ones who have to take responsibility first, All right? So, anything else you want to say, Sheikh? <laughs> Before we sign off, I, I think we said it all. I think we, and now I, I, I think we put it all on the on the table. Yeah, put it all out there on the table. 
Yeah, it was, it was, it was I, had, I had fun, honestly. Man. It was great. It was great, man. It was a great story, right? Um, inshallah, I got to have you on yeah, again, man. inshallah, man. It's like, we, we got to do this again sometime, inshallah. Yeah, we, got, we have a, yeah, let's go some other topics. Yeah. Going on in the community. SubhanAllah. You know, I, you know, I might start, I might start doing some live. Absolutely, it'd be, it'd be my honor, bro. Your brain and uh, see, you see where where you find is at certain times. It'd be my honor, bro. It'd be my honor, absolutely, yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah. Fun a lot. All right, so but to the like audience, subscribe. I hope the audience audience got some good out of it. Oh, uh, even me myself, I was enjoying it, man. It was. It, I'm, if I enjoyed it, I know the audience will enjoy it, man. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, subscribe, share. Hit me up on Patreon. This is your brother C. L. Edwards, our guest on this episode of Convert uh, Profiles. Uh, check him out on YouTube. And what's your YouTube and your and your um, your your Facebook handle? Uh, the, the YouTube is CL Edwards, CL Edwards Preacher to Muslim. That's mm -hmm. the YouTube channel. Um, I got a TikTok account also mm -hmm. um, because, you know, that's where the young people are at. That's where the youth yeah. are at. So <laughs> I put stuff up on Utah, uh, TikTok as well. And that's uh, uh, um, Abu Yazid 112. Mm -hmm. No, I'm no, sorry, Abu Yaz, A B U Y A Z 112. So hit me up on TikTok as well. And uh, I, of course, I got uh, a Facebook. Uh, if you look up uh, Abu Yazid or CL Edwards, say you should be able to pop up uh, my Facebook uh, uh, profiles as well. Jazakallah khair. Subhanahu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.